Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Q&A of Harlan Ryzen. I'm Ruth Somalo, one of the featured programmers for Doc NYC, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our great Rainer Ramirez, the director of Harlan Ryzen. Hello, Rainer. How are you? Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Um, so tell us, I, I, I love this film, and I love, you know, Jeffrey Canada, and I am even surprised that it's taking this long for somebody to, you know, to bring about these incredible stories. and. Um, so, so maybe you can start by telling us how did you get involved in the project, you know, and I, I, I've, I've heard it's a passion project and it took yeah. you so many years. So maybe you can, you can uh, tell sure. us a little bit about the origin. Well, thank you, Ruth. Thank you very much. It really means a lot uh, to be part of Doc NYC because it's our hometown, right? And it's my hometown. And uh, so the start, this idea about doing a Harlem Children's Zone documentary started for me like 15 years ago when I worked for NBC News and I pitched it to them. I lived up in Washington Heights and I said, you know, and I was looking for a story about programs that would eliminate poverty because I was really into the UN's Millennium Goals back in the early 2000s. You remember those? Mm -hmm. You know, if you invest in healthcare, education, social services, you can eliminate poverty within 10 years, we passed 10 years. But anyway, so I pitched it to them. I told them I could follow kids as they grew up through the Harlem Children's Zone, through the pipeline, because I lived in Washington Heights and I would pass through Harlem every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could follow kids growing up through the pipeline. And they said no. Mm -hmm. So I let it go. And then a couple of years ago, um, just by happenstance, a friend of ours happened to work at the Harlem Children's Zone. I was lamenting how I regretted not being able to work on that documentary. And that same week, it was another friend of mine sent me a request for proposal for a documentary about the Harlem Children's Zone. There was 400 hours of archival footage. Wow. <laughs> and, and when I heard that, I, was, I called him up and I was like, wait a second, is, can you follow kids as they grew up through the archival footage? They had no idea, but they said yes. And I was like, and, and I wrote up a, a pitch and they, they, they bought it. Yeah. Cause I had it all in my head sort of, as, but I had to reverse engineer it through archival footage. So, so how is that casting pro process? Because I love every single person in the film. And yeah. I mean, they're all just like incredible and eloquent and gorgeous and you know powerful and driven and did you did you find them in the archive first and then see if you could locate them in real life or you did it the other way around how did that work that's a great question well i was having so i had to do a history of the organization right that was yeah but also i had to interweave all these narrative arcs through it mm -hmm. and basically the 400 the original 400 archives for the original 400 hours of archives, we went, we, we went through it and just found people who rose to the top, people who appeared frequently throughout the ages. So that was Sal Betts, Raina Bonaparte, uh, Davidson Joseph, right? And, you know, kind of, I did a sizzle reel uh, about the document because I didn't know if it would be like 45 minutes or 60, 60 minutes because of the archives. And I just didn't know how, what length it would be. And after we did the sizzle, this 10 minute scissor reel, they found like more than 800 hours more of archival footage. <laughs> and the same people rose to the top, those three people wow. who appeared frequently um, throughout the videos because they were involved in what was really popular in the 90s for kids like me growing up was like these after school programs which taught you video production. Mm -hmm. Is Reina the one that at the beginning said, I want to be a veterinarian and teach veterinarians because that's a very important job and I am very important? Oh, that's that's Saquon. He's the five, okay. yeah, Saquon. That's, he's a present day kindergartner. And that casting, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there are many, there were so many parts, yeah, there were so many people we cast, yeah, you know, like we, yeah, there were some, there were a lot of a lot of really amazing stories that I met, you know, that I encountered through that, that this project, and not all of them wanted to be part of the documentary. But um, Saquon and his family were amazing. They're just so they just had an eloquence about them that had a different perspective on living in the in you know the St. Nicholas housing mm -hmm. um, projects. And. Um... 
also talk, talk to us a little bit about constructing, because I think this is a history lesson in this film. And yeah. I've only been in New York for 12 years, but I, I love the way that you tell the story of New York in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, yeah. you know, through this incredible archive, you even weaved in, you know, archive of Malcolm X and, you know, other, you know, historical figures, just to tell, you know, what was really happening socially, politically, and in the streets and how everything affected everything. And, um, how how did you so in a way there's like three films within a film so how did you uh, <laughs> how did you weave in you know the different aspects and the different narratives what was the editing process and how did you tackle oh. the archive? so in my original pitch i wanted to contextualize the history of harlem within the larger history of america um <laughs> and how did you went about doing that because that's like you know, such a tremendous project on itself. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to really contextualize it within the uh, context of the bigger history of Harlem and, and, and the, the history of Harlem within the history of the United States, right? Harlem became like this Mecca for people from Southern Blacks because they were getting lynched down there. They were being terrorized. So they had to go up and Harlem was this Mecca. And I wanted to contextualize that, that um, by showing that um, Harlem was at one point this great beacon of light, right? But then because of economic injustices, it suffered a lot. And, um, and I wanted to show that people from within Harlem was really rising above to create opportunities for themselves. And how is it working with Jeffrey? And like his enthusiasm, like, I mean, if we, if we just give all the power to people like him, like I think yeah. we live in a very different world. And it's so inspiring to see how much yeah. energy and, you know, positive, you know, and affectionate, yeah. you know, action he he's able to galvanize. So tell us a little bit about working with him. I'm sure he was in love with the project, but uh, uh, probably yeah. very precious too, right? Yeah, I mean, he is just, Jeffrey Canada is one of the best storytellers I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a blessing too. It was, like I'd sit down with him for two hours and I was never bored. I was like, just, I would ask him one question and he would just go off for like 10 minutes because he would always frame, you know, the struggle of the Harlem Children's Zone, the opportunities he created within this storytelling arc. That's really his, right? I mean, there's a lot of, you said there are three different stories, three different films within the story, but it's really, it's, the basic story is a hero's journey, right? It's based mm -hmm. on Jeffrey, Canada. Everyone just kind of echoes him. Like mm -hmm. he's, he came from a poor background and with education, he was able to, you know, mm -hmm. make a revolution. And um, I, I just can't remember exactly when he passed, but were you able to talk to Rasuli Lewis? Uh, yes, yes. Actually, Rasuli Lewis, uh, yeah, he was our very first interview. Oh, wow. Actually. And, and, and his interview helped me frame the history of the Harlem Children's. He's incredible. So I'm also very happy that the film is like dedicated to him and that, yeah. and that yeah. you, um, you were able to just bring him out into the light, you know, as one of yeah. those great heroes. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, like th there's certain things in the film that are also brilliant, like when you explain, you know, how the program really reaches peak, you know, and closing closing the racial achievement gap, you know, in 2019, you know, there is there is actual like investigative, you know, yeah. um, educational news in it. And um, tell us a little bit about that aspect of the work. And also, like, if you are in any way interested in continuing kind of like this, this line of inquiry, you know, into other projects. Oh, um, uh, yeah, so the data was really important to get in there, but you know, you just can't throw data up there for mm -hmm. um, people to see. I, I kind of, there were several seeds I planted in the very, the few acts, the first few acts that I wanted to have sort of payoffs in the end. And that was one of them, you know, I set up the school as having struggles with with the state, state test scores. And, you know, it just revealed in the end that that that's that they overcame that. So it's kind of a yeah. There are a couple of reveals, especially with with um, yeah, Nikki Barnes too. That I really that was super conscious on my part. 
And um, I mean, it seems to me, and I know you also talked about how Obama, you know, used it as a model and expanded yeah. the project into other communities and other parts of the country. Yeah. But um, how much is still this um, like a, like a blueprint for change? Is it is it has it been used wide widely? Like you know, I know in your map you show that even in Spain, where I'm from, you know, there is schools that are using the model of the charter school. Yeah. Um, but in a way, is there is there good news? Can you give us good news of like how this incredible way of going about you know reforming um, you know society um, through school systems um, can be like a, a living way of change for many other places? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I mean that's really part of the film, right? It's sort of narrative and also instructional and also kind of you know hopefully inspirational, but the Harlem Children's Zone has a practitioner's institute where people come from all over the world to learn about the, the model, the Harlem Children's Zone's model of providing a holistic approach to, to education. And not everyone can go back in their communities and apply everything, right? Because some people, some communities are in rural communities. They have different needs yes. from urban communities, right? Because of the, just geographically, it's just hard to do that, to have a place-based education space. But yeah, I mean, our, our hope is to kind of amplify this model and, and create change. I mean, you know, I, from working on this documentary, I, I've lived in Washington Heights for like 20 years. And um, when I started working on this documentary, it was really the first time I realized, like my block looks just like 1980s New York. There were abandoned buildings, there's, the underground economy, it was thriving. You can buy, you know, anywhere from plantains, chicharron and crack or heroin and people are just shooting up all over the place. And, and then after I worked on this documentary, I was like, wait a second, if they can do it one, one block, maybe I can do that too. And, and so I contacted one of the schools on my street and um, we realized that there are six public schools on 182nd streets between Amsterdam and Broadway, six public schools. So thousands of kids and, stu and, and teachers walk by every day passing through this 1980s New York scene, right? Of abandoned buildings, you know, drugs everywhere, just trash everywhere. And, and I know from my work that children's outlook depend greatly on their environment, right? And, um, and I was like, do I make, do I, leave this community or do I try to make a change and talk to the school. The students are immigrants just like me and you know they created a curriculum to beautify the street on 182nd street so now we raised like 100 grand to create a <laughs> to create this vision of pedestrianizing 182nd street to create connect all the public schools there. That's our vision. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Well, we're going to have to leave you here, but I really <laughs> commend you for this fantastic work and I hope it will keep inspiring people. Um, and thank you so much for bringing us all these incredible humans to the screen yeah. to share it with us. Thank you so yeah. much, Peter. Thank you for having us.